Uh, Britain's asylum backlog has hit an all-time high, again, according to new figures from the Home Office. There are now more than 175,000 arrivals waiting for a decision on their claim, uh, up 44% from last year and costing British taxpayers a staggering £3.9 billion a year. Figures also show a paltry 1% of last year's 45,000 small boat crossing cases have received a decision with more than two-thirds of all applicants being granted asylum status or humanitarian protection. Despite the government introducing tougher legislation to crack down on illegal migration, its much-championed Rwanda deportation scheme remains ensnarled in the courts, leaving experts warning that until officials process applications faster, arrivals will continue to outpace removals, creating a permanent backlog. The problem with this argument about we must process them quicker is that <coughs> nobody actually thinks what would then happen. And I keep making the same case every time we talk about this, that if you process them quicker and find more people are ineligible, what do you do with them then? Because we can't deport them anywhere. We can't send them to Rwanda. We can't send them to Essential Island. We can't send them back to France. So you're stuck with the same situation where, well, you don't qualify to stay here, but we'll have to keep but you here what, anyway. But the ones that are unsuccessful, eventually, once they've been processed, they are deported. Are they? Well, yes, because because once, once the legal case has been made that that person has no right to stay in the country... When was the last time they deported the anybody? They're put on planes all the time. They're not. They, they literally are, deported these, about these 30 ones, people. Very last small numbers. But these are the Tiny. ones that the once the legal, you know, the legal case has finished. Yeah, but, but the legal course, case never would... finishes because the lefty lawyers will come back with yet but another appeal. Not every asylum seeker appeals. That's just that's... yeah. Most of them do though. But the point is, the system doesn't work. You know, so all the people who say, "Oh, we must just make the system work better," no. But that the means... answer is not. You won't stop the backlog unless you stop the people. But coming. you're saying, but, but in effect, you're saying we shouldn't allow anybody to claim asylum. I'm saying we should stop the people coming here for now, even if you don't agree with that as a principle. Unless you stop people from arriving, you'll never catch up with the backlog. You'll be doing it for hundreds of years. Yeah, but we're not, but we're not doing know, anything about the backlog currently. They're literally doing nothing would, yeah, about the backlog. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is it's wrong to make out that, make, that changing the backlog and doing anything to it would actually alter the situation, because it wouldn't. Because what we haven't said is that the numbers coming out of the Home Office today are incredible. You know, we offered something like 1.2 million people visas to come here legally. Forget about the illegals. You know, we've yeah, got yeah, 1.2 I mean, yeah. million people coming here legally a, to yeah. work, argument. and a quarter of those people are bringing dependents with them. So the whole immigration system is knackered, quite frankly. I mean, and, but because the larger number is, is, is legal and the smaller number is illegal, you put the all, the, all of it together. And do you know how many visas they gave in 2022 for people to come to this country? Well, I know, but that's why... 3.2 yeah, million. But that's why I think it's Rishi Sunak thought saying that his slogan was going to be stop the boats was actually quite clever because he saw that as a small problem, a very visible problem where, you know, you see all the pictures, but actually... Whereas the bigger know, numbers uh, are elsewhere. The bigger numbers are sort of hidden. Yeah, well, yeah, he should have said... So it's not so clever kind of that's, well, that's my boats. point. But I think that the, 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 the important point is why are, pe why are these people choosing to come to the UK and then get stuck in this huge, you know, a never-ending back? Log, um, for years on end instead of staying in the, in the EU. And the main reason is because the, the disparity between the number of people that get approved uh, in the first application in the EU versus the UK. So we approve first-time applicants 77% of the time. Mm. The EU average 37% of the time. So really the reality is we need to be refusing a lot more of them. Yeah. Because if not, they're just going to risk mm. coming here. We don't have an ID card system here in the UK, unlike most of Europe. So when yeah. they do come and they do get lost in the system, well, there's no way of tracking See, them. See, I think that's and this a is good the... argument for having an ID card well, system. What... And I know it's been really well, just 400,000 migrants over the last five years. Anymore. We can't just bring in a, you know, a universal card system just because of you know the population of Solihull has come over in, in, on small boats and have somehow been lost in the system. They should be kept in detention centres and not been al be allowed to leave. A couple of points on that. What, one is, uh, I think it was Michael Crick I had on today, the journalist, who, who made the point that, you know, because many of these people, and we've seen video footage of people throwing away their papers or passports before they arrive yeah, here, that. lots of theories as, as to why they do that. It's very easy to, to then claim you're from... Uh, a country where you've got greater chance of of, 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 of succeeding. Um, and he made a very simple point that if you want to start the process, it, would, it wouldn't address the whole thing, but anyone who's got their papers, right, we'll deal with you first, mm -hmm. and you've got a greater chance of us yeah. understanding or being sympathetic, so that might be something on this. It's worth noting that if you took the, the, the backlog we have at the moment, 175,000, they're solving uh, or dealing with about 2,000 a month so far, it would take about seven and a half years at that current rate to achieve that result. And the third thing I think is worth remembering, by the time this gets to the next terrible stage, the next big number, there's probably going to be a Labour government and the chances are Keir Starmer will simply say, at the stroke of a pen, 50%, I'm granting you asylum. And he'll halve it. And he'll claim he's halved it. Mm. And in fact, he'll claim that all of those 50% went out to work, etc. 
because there is no other way at the moment, short of sticking people physically on planes or boats and then let it sail off or fly away, there are, <laughs> this government have no options. They're out of options. No, I mean, the fact is they've had their rings run around them by a combination of the, the people traffickers who are very good at what they do, um, the lawyers who are also very good at what they do. Correct. Um, and the charities, like Care for Calais, they had uh, a report published this morning, <laughs> uh, Care for Calais, uh, rocked by serious misconduct findings. It was a few years ago. Uh, and the woman who was in charge, who started it, called Claire Mosley, stepped down. But basically they found out there was so much money suddenly swilling through this particular charity, which started off as a kind of a local neighbourhood, let's try and be nice to the migrants and never give them a blanket. Suddenly they had millions and millions of pounds going through their accounts, and they've got so much money coming their way. And most of it's coming from government organisations, most yep. of it's coming from quangos, most of it is not collected necessarily on the streets. But uh, the Charity Commission said the organisation lacks appropriate governing structures, had poor internal financial controls, and its approach to handling complaints was inadequate. I do think it's really important to say, though, that they have not been accused of stealing or embezzling they any haven't. of that money. They've been accused of being really rubbish yeah. at organising no, themselves. The but they haven't been accused the story of for us, any I think, theft. Is, is, is the huge amount of money that is behind these organisations. Yeah, Care that's for now has assets in excess of a million pounds. And you go, well, how did you get that money? And it's because people just keep giving it to them. They're not doing anything illegal, but it just staggers me that these are all the things that are stacked up against the government, who are the ones not doing a very good job. Yeah. yeah. Although the report did also say that them taking the government to court over Rwanda was perfectly legal, because that was the other complaint that we made against them. But I love it when I get the final word.